Hello, my name is Soret and this is my prayer craft studio video where I'm showing you how to do watercolor swatches. So in this video right now, I'm writing down all the information from each of the watercolor tubes in one watercolor paper, the same one I use for my paintings. And I'm just going to talk about a little bit about the information that I write down in each one of the watercolor swatches. So first of all, after finding the same watercolor paper, I want you to see that there are two squares, or one square and one little rectangle, and underneath there are like three lines where I'm writing down the information that I find on the website for each of one of the brands. So I want you to go ahead and go to search online and I'm gonna show you right here the information that you find about each one of the watercolors that you have. So here you find all the properties and this is what you are going to write down. So the first thing you are going to be writing is the brand. So the brand, there are so many different brands, you choose your favorite ones. Uh, and I recommend to use all of the same colors for one watercolor paper because we want to use this as reference for the future for the future paintings so the number two uh, thing we're going to be writing down is the name color there are different pigments for each one of the formulas the manufacturers use so even if they have the same name they're completely different so I want you to pay attention to your favorite color and if you really like that color you stick with it and buy the same brand um, number three we see that we're gonna be looking at the light fastness so the light fastness is the permanency of the color once the painting is exposed to direct Sun or high humidity area so you don't want your paint to fade away after so much time and effort put on this painting right so you want the best and i recommend you to choose those colors to say excellent or very good uh, watercolor and that's like number one and number two um, light fastness for each of one of the paintings the paints you have the other thing we're going to be writing down in our information is the transparency. So the transparency goes from transparent, semi-transparent, semi-opaque, and opaque. So according to your preference, you want this information. The more layers, uh, transparent layers you can have in your watercolor, uh, the transparency I really high. Uh, I really prefer transparency or semi-transparent. Opaque is really good for like highlights or shades at the end of your painting. But uh, through the painting, I show I choose usually transparency. Then we have the information about granulation, and this is so. This is the more pig pigment you have in one paint the more granulation you have. So some artists like this property, some others don't. This just add, creates texture to your painting. It's kind of hard to control, but once you get used to it, it just creates beautiful, beautiful paintings. And you will see this in the information as yes or no, according to the brand. So in some of the brands, I found out that it's really hard to find um, this information. And that's why in some of the, my watercolor uh, swatches, I don't have this information, but in some like Daniel Smith, it will, it will be really clear for that. The next property that you want to know is the stain. So it's a yes or no, the effect of permanency and correction after a painting is dry. we are going to go through the watercolor swatches right now. So I want you to grab the watercolor brush of your preference. I chose for this to uh, round brush because I usually use round brushes for my paintings, but you can 
easily use a flat brush which is like it will leave like a very nice stroke after stroke very clean stroke so this is the technique that i use to do the watercolor swatches so first i saturate my watercolor brush in paint very 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 um saturated and that's the first line i'm going to create on the top the first stroke i'm going to create from the top to the bottom then after that i'm going to have this my paper towel or a towel and then I just want to clean a little bit my brush and then go over and and dip my brush in in clean water and then just try to get another stroke right underneath that saturated stroke you did and then just go over and over again just cleaning your brush dipping in the water and go underneath your last stroke until it's completely transparent so in there you're going to see the level so the different levels of transparency of your color so after that you are going to use the last square or a little rectangle underneath the watercolor swatches which is going to be used to to put the wet on wet technique and what we do is to grab completely clean water and just get all that area wet and then on the left side of your square you're going to tip your brush in the saturate part of your paint in with your palette in your palette and then grab that paint and just barely touch the left side of your square and then see how the the color mixes with the water and travels through water and just like that don't add a lot more paint just a little bit on the left side and that'll be it it will be, it will look completely different once it all dries and you will see the the reaction afterwards so this is what's going to happen when in your painting when you do wet on wet for each one of your paints so after this um i'm going to be painting a little bit uh, a little flower here and this is what I usually do I have my watercolor uh, swatches next to me next to my painting so I know what colors to use and how it will react when I'm painting on the same watercolor paper so I hope this video was really helpful for you and please leave me a comment like it share it and we'll see you next time thank you bye bye